Six oh five. One of the most the emotional stories we report. Six oh five remaining. Let's go to Tim Brandt. Fern, one of the most emotional stories we reported on at CBS last year was about UNLV cheerleader Valerie Pita. She entered City of Hope Medical Center for a bone transplant, hoping to remove Hodgkin's disease from her body. And we're happy to say Valerie is back, and it's great to see you. Thank you. It's really great to be here. I look forward to this day. I really did. I'd like to thank everyone out there for all your support. You feel strong? I feel very strong. And we're winning, and it's exciting. All right, Valerie. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, Vernon, the prognosis is good. She was the homecoming queen. She's re-enrolled in school. She's cheering for UNOV. That's terrific news, Timmy. Thank you very much. 6.02 to go in the ball game. Another steal for Providence. That was a case where it was a set play, Vern, to go long, but there wasn't anything there. So, again, a, a, a judgment call. UNOV dodged the bullet on that one. 77-66. Last night, that's four. And that really hurts uh, UNLV because, to me, he's their most solid big front court ball handler. And although that was a quick exchange, it looks like Providence thinking about going man to man. Let's see if Vegas goes back to their zone. I think it'd be wise. And they are. Yep. They went man to man at Providence burned them. UNLV 5 of 9 from three-point range in this half. And that as much as the defensive change has been a big difference. More ways open, they don't get him the ball on the swing. A slow with the ball rotation yep. that time. Shot too strong. Saved by Carlton Screen. Penetrates, dishes back to Brooks for three-pointer. Puff points and takes it. Looks like a replay of the Georgetown game. Pump fake, get the defender by. Almost stolen. 77-69, five minutes to go. A lot of time in this ball game. Could be close to 10. Osman again. Terrific body control. He is one of the smoothest inside players I've seen. Baz Knight. To the tipped, he tipped it, and the referee didn't see it. That should be Providence ball. That's not he tipped it. Came flying by us, grimacing because he knew he had tipped it. Yeah, he did tip the ball. Take a look at it again. That's now Tim Higgins is overruled. Pete Pavia. There's no question that Jarvis Knight hit the ball with his left hand coming out. Tarkanian up and staring at Tim Higgins. The referee overruled Pete Pavia. Well, that's good officiating. You're trying to get it right. You bet. 10 point mark, 434 to go in the game. Great rebound by Patio. UNLV trying to go 14 and 1. Their only loss at home to UC Santa Barbara. Pretty good outfit from Zomba. Certainly is. Patio, three points. Rebound, Steve Wright. Daryl Wright. Out of control. Puts it up anyway, and Patio gets the rebound. Trying to come back too quick. Blind pass, right side to pass night. Or no. Booby James, got it. Dandy for you today, and uh, more great basketball next Saturday on CBS. Doubleheader tips it off. Pitt versus Oklahoma. Some of you will see Kentucky versus LSU. That's at 2 o'clock Eastern time. And then all of you will watch Purdue versus Louisville in the second game. Louisville won today. And then on Sunday, Big East encounter from the Carrier Dome. Georgetown goes up to Syracuse to take on Ronnie Cycli and the Syracuse Orange Band. Perry McDonald, the senior starter for Georgetown, will lead them into that game. Vern, uh, we've got a team today in Vegas that have had over six games this year, over 100. You've talked about Pitt, Oklahoma. Oklahoma now averaging right under 115 a game. And the 100 is a big number for you today, huh? Well, in the family, my grandmother, Edla Lundquist, my dad's mother, turns 100 years old today. So, terrific. Happy birthday. I'll be in Lindsburg, Kansas tomorrow for the celebration. Oh, they wish you well in another 100. Use some clock now if you're Vegas. Ah. And the 
your Providence. You don't have to rush that much. It's, they're just down 12. There's still a lot of time on this block to work into the offense. Use that three-point play. This will be Providence the inbound. Auburn leading and North Carolina State on top. So also with Memphis State by three over Tulsa. Check the lineups now. Providence has Burton, Steve Wright, Chris Watts back in the lineup with Screen and Delray Brooks. Screen, back to Watts. And again, remember, Vern, you've got that PCAA team potentially winning on a Big East score. And that affects all the winning teams in the PCAA who have aspirations in the NCAA tournament. Now to see Delray look down and see if he's yeah. behind the three-point line. They're getting a little bit too much aware of it right now, and they need to stay in their regular offense. You see Gordy Chase tell him, get back into the passing game, get moving against that zone. Boy, is that zone been effective. That's the three. Chris Watts. Nice piece of coaching by Chase. Five points for Watts. Foul, Delray Brooks. Memphis State defeats Tulsa, 54-47. We have three minutes remaining in our game. And a fourth personal foul on Delray Brooks. stronger teams out west for the last five or six years. How about these other teams? Arizona, UTEP, New Mexico, BYU. I think the west is going to be able to represent itself this year in the NCAA tournament. They don't have to be shifting everybody out there. There's an awful lot of teams out there very capable of playing on the national scene. Well, the WAC has really come back this year. Western Athletic Conference. Don't see that many top ten teams in the West though. Baz Knight now has 17 points. It may have a singular representative if somebody doesn't start playing well in the, right. in the NCAA tournament. But that one may take them all the way to the championship. <laughs> yes. Well, you, and I, you and I have talked about it again, but what a great thing it is to see Steve Kerr back in the Arizona team. There's the follow from Steve Wright. Good outlet. going to the boards for Providence. That means there's nobody back to defensive balance, so Vegas is going to be able to get that break. Darryl Wright. Oh, they can't get anything to fall. And another rebound and an elbow for... Oh, I don't know about that one. Anthony Todd called for the foul. Targanian disagrees as well. That's three on Anthony Todd. Crowd of 13,100 gathered this afternoon in the frigid environs of Providence, Rhode Island, here at the Providence Civic Center. UNLV fell behind 16 to 7, and they trailed for half 49-43, but they used a 16 to 2 run to open the second half to take the lead for the first time, and they're up 85-72 now with two and a half remaining. Vern, this is one of those games when a coach goes back over the, over the course of the year, watches the tapes. This is where a coach really won a ball game. The adjustments that Jerry Tarkanian has made in this game, and, and not being so proud to say, you know what, our man-to-man -man is good, and that's our basic defense, but we can't stop him, so we're going to go to something else. And it's not often that Vegas is not capable of handling somebody man-to-man, -man, but they couldn't take problems with that defense today. That Billy and the, and the offensive change when they put Todd on the uh, high post to open. That's right. Now they're going to a little delay game, trying to use some clock. Todd fancies himself playing the ball hand. <laughs> and you don't. No, I think he should be buried down on the post somewhere. <laughs> he will eventually throw one away if he handles it too much. Here he comes. Look at him now. Put it on the floor, huh? Yep. Loses his dribble. Nine on the shot clock. Stolen by Darrell Wright. Red ball. The referee's pretty good. Quentin Burton back into the lineup now for Providence. And still only five seconds left in the shot clock for Nevada Las Vegas. Steve Wright heads out of the game. Leaves with four fouls and nine points. Good pass. Great nice steal. Carlton Screen defending. UNLV gets it right back up just as the shot clock goes. And that ought to do it. 87-72, 128 to go. Stacy Ogden has soft hands. Boy, he just catches anything that goes around him. Oh, what an impression. There he goes again. Here's Ogden again. 
good teamwork. Keith James. Impressive second half by UNLV. I have a feeling you might like Stacy Ogden for our Chevy player of the game. Yeah, I, I really do. Off the corner. Patio. UNLV will be 14-1. They go to Logan, Utah, Tuesday night to take on Utah State. This game all but wrapped up for the running Rebels, and tomorrow we've got football for you. The NFC Championship, Minnesota against the Redskins. Our coverage begins at 12. And what does this performance tell you about uh, UC Santa Barbara? They beat the Rebels on their own court. In Las Vegas, was right. 16,000. You know, when Jerry was the coach at Long Beach State, he played 65 home games in his career there as a coach. Won 65. They're <laughs> 65 and 0 at home. I mean... Now, I'm not going to make any insinuation about the referees, but 65 and 0 is strong, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, my old buddy Al McGuire played him once down there, and Al said that's a good team to schedule after they have selected the NCAA tournament pairings. So what Al would do is schedule them on the Sunday when the pairings were already out, because he said that loss wouldn't hurt me, and he already counted as a loss. That's great. Well, you hear about Magic Johnson's triple doubles all the time in the NBA. How about Stacey Ogden? Ten rebounds, ten assists, 19 points. And a deflection right there. Yeah. Got a couple of steals to toss in there, too. And he is a freshman from Pasadena, California. Final minute, 48 seconds, as a matter of fact, 91-72. Delray Brooks. Delray Brooks got a figure that, that Vegas has had six men on that defense. He hasn't been able to get over. Here's Patty will give a little four on night way up for the rebound I like that night as a ball handler for a big man that's not has 13 rebounds in this game and he sat out about half of the first half with three fouls final 12 seconds Rebels of the Battle of Las Vegas go to 14 and 1. And how about Rod Strickland this afternoon comes back and gives the ball again? Got out of the doghouse and had an excellent day with 28 points. Clemson wins, or rather, yes, and Iowa State won big. UCLA fell to Louisville. Nebraska has yeah, some Missouri's big having some trouble. Yeah, they are. They just can't get on track. And that all this team. Sonny Smith is just doing a great job with that ball club. Kind of a Interesting game, NC State, though. Illinois wins over Wisconsin. Blue Henson's team. There's a steal by Patio. Have one more shot in the ball game. Little dipsy do. And they win by 20. UNLV down by six at the half. Surges to a 92-72 win. disease from her body and we're happy to say Valerie is back and it's great to see you. Thank you. It's really great to be here. I look forward to this day. I really did. I'd like to thank everyone out there for all your support. You feel strong? I feel very strong and we're winning and it's exciting. All right, Valerie. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Vernon, the prognosis. A, a, a judgment call. UNLV dodged the bullet on that one. 77-66. Last night, that's four. And that really hurts uh, UNLV because, to me, he's their most solid big front court ball handler. And although that was a quick exchange, it looks like problems think about going man to man. Let's see if Vegas goes back to their zone. I think it'd be wise. 605 One of the most the emotional stories we report. 605 remaining. Let's go to Tim Brandt. One of the most emotional stories we reported on at CBS last year was about UNLV cheerleader Valerie Pita. She entered City of Hope Medical Center for a bone transplant, hopefully to remove Hashis is good. She was the homecoming queen. She's re-enrolled in school. She's cheering for UNLV. That's terrific news, Timmy. Thank you very much. 6.02 to go in the ball game. Another steal for Providence. That was a case where it was a set play, burn to go long, but there wasn't anything there. So, again...